In this video, we're going to be uh, exploring how to solve matrices, or excuse me, well, systems, but using matrices in this video, especially systems that uh, produce inconsistent solution sets or uh, consistent dependent solution sets. So those would be your no solution cases and your all real numbers cases and how you would necessarily identify those if you were using matrices. So we're going to kind of go quickly through this. Uh, one thing I want to point out though is this, uh, throughout this entire video, we're going to be taking the system and rewriting it as what we call an augmented matrix. So an augmented matrix, if you're not familiar already, is a matrix that contains all of our coefficients of our variables and our solutions on the right. So let's take a look at this first system over here. We say solve this system, x plus 2y is 7, 2x plus y is 8. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is going to write the matrix, or the augmented matrix that corresponds to this system. So you'll notice our coefficients here are 1 and 2 in our first row, 1 and 2. Uh, second row, 2 and 1, and then this. You know, we, we often, you know, sometimes see people put a dotted line in here, uh, and sometimes they don't. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the ones that does not do that. But uh, we say this is our augmented matrix that corresponds to this 2 by 3 system. Now, 2 by 3, because it has two rows and three columns. Now, this is sort of of little importance in this video, but we do want to know how to classify these matrices. Um, but here's what we'd like to do. We also want to use what we refer to as Gauss-Jordan elimination. Now, Gauss, or Carl Gauss and Jordan, not sure. I'll have to look that up. Dear Google. But Gauss-Jordan elimination. Gauss-Jordan elimination has one intent. And that intent is to make our matrix look like this. One's down the main diagonal, as far as we can get them in this echelon form. And then zeros above and below them. Uh, what would have to be left would be some matrix looks like this. Now this is a vertical bar here, but this would basically rewriting the system that corresponds to this matrix that we see here, we'd say x plus 0y is equals a or x equals a. And the second equation would be 0x plus a y equals b, where y would equal b, and we would therefore have the solution to the system. So we want this in what we call reduced row echelon form, and this is often abbreviated RREF. So Let's go ahead and get this party started. We're taking a look at our matrix here, and we notice that we already have a 1 in the top left corner. So we're going to use our uh, elementary row operations to kill off everything below it and make it a 0. That means this. We're going to take negative 2 times row 1, and we're going to add it to row 2. Now the beauty of this is, you know, you might be saying to yourself, self, we did operate on row 1, but as a matter of fact, we did not operate on row 1. We scalar multiplied it and dumped it onto row 2. So even better, I know automatically that this thing below it is now 0 because negative 2 times this top left 1 is negative 2 and add that to a positive 2, you get 0. So let's look at the second row here. We say negative 2 times this positive 2 up here uh, is negative 4. Negative 4 plus this 1 right here is negative 3. So now this is negative 3. And then negative 2 times this positive 7 here is negative 14. Negative 14 plus a positive 8 is negative 6. So now when dealing with the last row, we say, all right, I want to do this Gauss-Jordan elimination thing. I need this to be a 1 here. You know, doing that over and down thing, that echelon form. So we're going to take it times it's reciprocal. We say negative one-third, negative one-third times row two. We're allowed to scalar and multiply as one of our three basic elementary row operations. So now we have the first row unchanged. Second row, this is definitely a zero for good. Now we have a one here because we cause this to happen. All I want to know is what is negative one-third of negative six? We get two. So at this point, we could say, well, you know, what we just found out was that y equals 2. And as a matter of fact, we did. But Gauss-Jordan elimination not only says, do I want 1s down my main diagonal and zeros below them, but we also want zeros on top of them as well. So now we're going to use this 1 that we got right here to kill off the 2 above it and make it 0. We'll do this by, uh, we'll take negative 2 times row 2 and now dump that onto row 1. And we get this brand new row equivalent system. So now let's talk about row 1. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite pretty much the whole thing. We say 1, 0, and now down here we have 0, 1. But you might be saying, why? Why can we do this? Just rewrite it like that. Uh, if we took negative 2 times this 0 that led off our uh, second row and dumped that onto 1, well, anything times 0 is 0, and anything plus 0 is itself. So that top left 1 is stuck. And then even better, we say, all right, well, if I took this 1 right here in the second row times the negative 2 and added it to the 2 above it, it'd be 0. Now this bottom left 2, bottom right, this is my right hand, uh, stays a 2. And then last but not least, we could say, okay, well, negative 2 of these positive 2's down here is negative 4 plus this positive 7 up here is 3. So what we end up with is a system that produces this set of equations, or set of solution, or this solution 
So we say x is 3 when y is 2, or we could say, hey, if we graph these two lines to be a consistent independent system, um, then the solution point would be 3, 2. So let's try this again. Uh, the next few systems we're going to be talking about inconsistent and consistent dependent systems using this Gauss-Jordan elimination thing, just so we can identify what it looks like when we do it. So we're going to go down to the bottom left corner here, and the first thing I want to do is I want to write the augmented matrix that is corresponding to this system. So we get negative 1, 1, let me rewrite that negative 1 there, negative 1, 1, negative 1.5. And then in the second row, we have 2, negative 4, 3. So now let's start in the top left corner. We need this negative 1 to be a positive 1. So we're going to do negative 1 times row 1. We get this new row equivalent system in which our whole first row has flipped its sign. So 2, negative 4, 3. And we have positive 1, negative 1, positive 1 1.5. Now that we have a positive 1 in the top left corner, we want to kick out everything underneath it. So our row operation is going to be this, negative 2 of our row 1's added to row 2 to get rid of that 2 in the second row. So now our new row equivalent system would be this. Row 1 is the same, 1, negative 1, 1 1.5, not changing. Second row now, we have a 0 down here. Now let's start thinking about a few other things. Negative 2 times this negative 1 up here is a positive 2. Excuse me, positive 2 plus this negative 4 is negative 2. So we have negative 2. And we say negative 2 times this up here would be negative 3. And negative 3 added to this 3 down here would be 0. Okay, so now we've got a situation where this is the top left 1 here. We would like to now get this bottom row to have a 1 right here. So we're going to multiply it by its reciprocal. Negative 1 half row 2. And we get this new system that says this. 1, minus 1, 1 1.5, 0, 1, and 0. Okay, so now we're going to use this one here to kick out the 1 above it. So we could say, all right, uh, row 2 plus row 1, and now we have this new row equivalent system. Okay, row 2 is the same thing. No, you're fine. Uh, uh, and then we say, okay, so 1. Uh, if we added this 1 down here to this 1, negative 1 up here, we'd have 0, which is what we wanted. And if we added this 0 plus this 1.5 up top, we get 1.5. So now I know I said I intended for this system uh, to be inconsistent, but it seems that when setting it up, I had, missed, uh, I had missed putting, if you look at the system here, a 2 out front. And you might go back and do this again with a 2. But, uh, you know, in this case, we ended up with x equals 1.5 and y is 0, which is totally consistent and independent. But if you were to do this with a 2, what I want you to notice is uh, one of these equations is pretty much a scalar multiple of the other equation. And uh, these two values on the right, you know, are also scalar multiples of the equation. So if we took the top equation times 2, doubled everything, and added it to the bottom equation, what you would get is something that says 0 is 0, okay, which is entirely consistent dependent. Um, we'll take a look at another one in the future here. We say, okay, so we'll solve top right here. Let's go ahead and write our augmented matrix. I want to go quickly through these. Say 1, negative 3, 5, negative 2, 6, negative 10. So now we've got a 1 in our top left corner. Let's go ahead and start working on getting everything underneath it to be nothing. So we say, all right, so two row 1s, we'll add that to row 2. And what it produces is this new row equivalent system, which is first row stays the same. 1, negative 3, 5. Second row, we have a 0 here now. 2 of these negative 3's on top of our 6 here would be 0. And then 2 of these 5's on top of this negative 10 here would, uh, would be 0. Ah, so here's our consistent dependent system. Consistent dependent system. Um, and the reason why I can tell this is because we end up with this equation down here as all zeros. If we were to put our variables back in, we'd say our system would look like this, x minus 3y equals 5, but the second equation would be 0 equals 0, which is entirely valid for all real numbers. When you arrive in a situation like this, what we tend to like to do is this. You know, we say, all right, whatever our last variable is, so in this case, y, you know, if we had a 3 by 3 system, we'd do a z or something. But we're going to allow y to equal some parameter a. Let. Let y equal a, which means our solution point or points to this are of the form a for our y value. So now that we know y equals a, what we can do is we can go back and plug this into our first equation, which was x minus 3y is 5. And we're plugging in a for our y, and we get x minus 3a. We got this. a is 5. 
and so therefore x equals 3a plus 5 when we add 3a to both sides. So our solution point here would be 3a plus 5 comma a. Anything plugged in there for a is going to satisfy this original set of equations. Now this last one, interesting, we have two variables, three equations. That is, we have three uh, lines. We want to know do they cross in an individual point. This often doesn't happen, but you know, we can do this system. We can set it up and solve it. So let's go ahead and set up our, our matrix. It tends, it happens to be a square matrix in this case. So we have 3, 3, 4, negative 1, 1, 4, negative 8, and then our constants of 4, negative 22 and 32. So the first thing I want you to recognize is if I want a 1 in the top left corner here, you know, it'd be really easy to just take our second row and switch it with our first row. So here's what we'll do. I want a positive 1 up there, so I'm going to take negative 1 times row 2, and I'm going to swap it, swap it out with row 1, which means this. Now our first row would be positive 1, negative 1, positive 22, after we negate it and switch it. Our second row was swapped with our first row, so we have 3, 4, 4, 4, negative 8, 32. So now we're going to get working on these other two rows down here, using our 1 to kick those things out. So our row operations are going to be these, negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2, and negative 4 times row 1 plus row 3. Let's go ahead and block off some space here. Uh, so we get this new row equivalent system in which our first row doesn't change because we had left it alone. We'd used it to operate with. These now are zeros for, for certain. Let's go ahead and work on our second row. We said negative three times the first row plus our second row. So negative three times this negative one is three plus our four is seven. Negative three times this top 22 is negative 66 and a negative 66 and a positive four is negative 62. And then now our third row, we say negative 4 of row 1 on top of the, the last row here. Negative 4 of this top negative 1 is 4. 4 plus a negative 8 is negative 4. And then we say this bottom row here, we say, okay, so uh, negative 4 times our top 22 here is negative 88. And negative 88 plus a positive 32. Let's think about this. It would be 56 and it would be negative. So negative, negative 56. So now that we've got this, we're going to attempt to get a a 1 in our second row here. So what we'll do is we'll multiply by its reciprocal. Uh, if I do this, I'm going to get 1 there, but I'm also going to get negative 62 sevenths. And this is really, really not a fun thing to do. So I notice that my second row here, if I were to switch it with my third row, I'd have negative 4 and negative 56 in the second row, which is what I want to do. I want to take row 2 and row 3 and swap them. And the reason behind this is because it's much easier to multiply by a scalar of negative 1 fourth on that third equation, 22. So we get this, let's say 0, negative 4, negative 56. Last row would be 0, 7, negative 62, if I've done my math right here. Um, wait a tick, negative 88, positive 32, 50. Yes, okay, we're good. So now we're going to do negative 1 fourth of row 2, and we get this. We'll produce this, 1, negative 1, 22. Our third row was untampered with, so we'll re-scribble it here. Got a 0 here and a 1 here, and a fourth of 56 of uh, 4, 16, 4. So 14, and it's positive, 14. So now that we've got a 1 here, we're going to use this 1 to kick out everything above and below it. So here's what we'll do. We'll say uh, row 1, row 2, on to row 1, since they're the same. And then we'll do negative 7, row 2's, on to row 3. We end up with this new system, this row equivalent. 0, 1, 14. Okay, top row would be 1. Uh, we have 0 here now, and we say, all right, uh, row 2 plus row 1, we end up with 36. And then the bottom row here, we say 0, 0, and then we said negative 7 times 14, so that'd be, what, negative 98 plus negative 62, uh, negative 160. Bottom line, though, is you'll notice that we have two equations here that produce invalid results. Actually, the top one's fine, but the bottom equation basically equates to this. 0x is plus 0y is equal to negative 160, which is not true, so we would say this is an inconsistent system. And I'm going to end the video now because it's super long, and cheers.